checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. Match number two. As second contest, as New Japan would say. I'm not making this up. Terry Gibbs versus Jose Luis Rivera. <laughs> yeah. Who? Jobbers. I I Jobber heard, Warfare. Uh, yeah, Jose Luis Rivera. This 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 I was far more appalled than the opener because they did go about twenty five minutes. <laughs> and it's two job guys wrestling for twenty five minutes. It was impossible impossible to care it wasn't even like it was very good mm -mm. it was just a bad long match this was where i was rethinking why are we watching these shows because this was fucking terrible i was watching this it's it's, it's so pro wrestling what a one it is headlocks and shoulder tackles and arm ringers mm -hmm. and i'm watching it in my head thinking i wonder if i could do this exact match right now yes you could oh yeah for and sure that's, we could that's before the part where Gibbs has a drop down, and Rivera jumps over him. I think Rivera was to spill over the ropes to the floor, but he just hits the ropes neck first and stops. Yeah. I definitely could do this match right now. Was this the one with Gorilla and Johnny V doing commentary? Yes. 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 They were so fucking bored. Yep. <laughs> they just jibber-jabbered and chit-chatted and didn't talk about the goddamn match at all, which as a viewer makes you care even less about a match you didn't care about. Yes. So I was like, God. G Gibbs does a cover where he's a cover where he's basically doing a plank pose over the guy. And Gorilla's like, why would you push up with your body with your arm like that? Sucked. Uh, Rivera eventually does a small package and a backslide and a sunset flip and wins. What a comeback. <laughs> Gorilla and Bobby Heenan spend several minutes debating whether or not Lord Littlebrook is actually part of the Heenan family. All right, here's something that happened. Here's some newsworthy and exciting. The Snake Pit with special guest, the Honky Tonk Man. This we got to talk about. We do, we do. So, uh, Jake the Snake's now a babyface. Mm -hmm. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He just is suddenly a babyface. I guess other things must have happened on other shows or whatever. I don't think so. I think he was just a dick to everyone, and he was a dick to Honky. It, no, no, he's definitely a babyface. Uh. He turned babyface, and yes, he's, he's burying the Honky Tonk Man. Honky comes out, and Honky is going to sing his new song. And Jake is like, you know, using the snake and he's he's making dick jokes and making fun of Honky and talking about how he literally introduced him saying, I have never met a man with a dumber name <laughs> than my guest here today. Honky Tonk Man. And Honky Tonk Man comes out and, uh, you know, he was Honky Tonk Man Wayne Ferris. But here his claim is that he his mother named him Honky Tonk Man. Yeah, right. That's his name. Middle name Tonk. His name is Honky Tonk Man. And why was he named this? Because he was born on a bar in mm -hmm. Memphis, Tennessee. On a pool table. On a pool table. At Joe's Bar and Grill, Memphis, Tennessee. And Jake's Jake at this point he just starts laughing. Because <laughs> you're just too much. And so Honky goes to to sing his song and he belts out a note and Jake scares him away with the snake. And uh Honky runs out the uh the entrance. But, you know, it's a shitty set. You guys ever watch Mr. Rogers? Sure. Seen it? Yeah, and he always had the neighborhood of make-believe. Sure. And you're a little kid, and you watch this show, and then one day they do the show where he takes you behind the scenes of the neighborhood of make-believe, and your whole life is just shattered. That's what happened to me, at least. But anyway, you find out this set's shitty, because you go out the door, and it's just a little set, you go around the corner, and, you know, Jake's yelling out the door or whatever, and Honky comes around the corner, and he's got his guitar. And I'm looking at this guitar, and I can already tell. It's legit. This is not a gimmicked guitar. Yeah. Because you can just tell the way Honky lifts it. It's got some weight to it. And he's got it turned sideways. And I'm like, oh, man. I still look good. Mm -mm. And Jake turns around, and fucking Honky Tonk Man swung this guitar like a goddamn baseball bat. Sideways. Bam! It fucking hits Jake in the side of the head. Jake's fucking... He looked like he was JFK. I mean, it just collapsed. He's dead. Just dead. Mm -hmm. And then Honky takes the guitar and he starts fucking whacking him with the guitar. And, uh, you know, to cut to the chase, Jake claims he was badly fucked up by this guitar shot. It destroyed his neck. It left him, it, it got him hooked on pills. 
he had to get neck surgery. He worked on it for two years, got neck surgery. And he's done interviews talking about this. And there are a lot of guys back in the day that make these claims about these famous moments. I think even Ricky claims, like, uh, Steamboat has a claim about one of the injury angles, which I think he's, like, totally forgotten that it was a work or whatever. I believe every word that Jake mm-hmm. said. He got fucking murdered by this guitar shot. I knew it before I even went back and looked it up. I could just tell the way he got hit. I mean, he was dead. And they ended up feuding. You know, Jake came back and still did the feud with the guy. And apparently he said, like, you know, the matches were all good. Everything was great, except that guitar shot fucked me up. Now, he did claim that he got hit by the side of the guitar. I think he's just confused because he got hit so hard. He was hit with the right part of the guitar, but sideways in the head which just whacked, just knocked his whole head sideways, and he collapsed and he was dead. This was fucking brutal. Brutal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even if you didn't know all that uh, before or after, this tone, we've seen the snake pits. This feels like every other snake pit we've seen. There's some wacky insults being thrown back and forth, some goofy comedy, the heels are all scared of the snake. It's all fun and games. And then this guitar hit happens, and Jake drops, and the mood shifts so much. It's mm-hmm. heavy. This feels like a big deal. he's dead. Yes. But we're laughing at the fact that Honky says his song, the song he was going to be singing, the song he was going to sing is called That's All Right, Honky Tonk Mama. I'm sad we never heard that one. No. But, yeah, the, uh, gu- the guitar, usually on the gimmick guitars, you know, they, they hit him in the head, and, like, the whole back falls off immediately. This just, there was like chunks of it falling off it it didn't come off in one piece it no came off in many slivers and shards and it looked absolutely brutal the gimmick guitars also have a little bit of like flour in them sure as well Well, i think they take out there's like an internal you know there are a couple pieces of wood on the inside that stabilize the whole thing they just take those out not here. Or they're fake guitars, you know. I yeah, think I mean, a lot of Jared's guitars were just, like, fake guitars or whatever. That's a big issue, yes, yes. This was a legit yeah. guitar. And I got one right here in the corner. If you ever fucking hit me with that thing, I'm calling the police. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it also helps that, you know, we had not seen this right. nonstop for 30 years at this point. And, you know, on Nitro, Jared's plunk people with guitars every single week. The novelty wears off. This was, oh, my God, he hit him with a guitar. <laughs> It was a big deal. The WrestleMania 3 report. Gene Oakland in the studio runs down what the time is the complete card. I don't know if you can add it or not. Uh, just listing off matches as fast as you can. Can Am Connection versus Morocco or Norton with a possible, possible surprise guest in the Can Am's corner. I don't think that happened, by the way. I forget. Butch Reed versus Coco Beware. Killer Bees versus Sheik and Volkov. Hercules versus Billy Jack Haynes. Bundy and Tokyo and Little Brook versus Hillbilly Jim, Haiti Kid, and Little Beaver. Harley Race versus Junkyard Dog and a Loser Must Kneel match. The Rougeaus versus Valentine and Beefcake with Dino Bravo in the corner. Randy Savage with Miss Elizabeth versus Ricky Steamboat versus uh, versus Ricky Steamboat with George Steele. The British Bulldogs and Tito Santana versus Danny Davis and the Hart Foundation. Roddy Piper's retirement match against Adrian Adonis. And the main event, Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. Celebrities, Aretha Franklin, Mary Hart, who I totally forgotten was a thing. Mm-hmm. Bob Euchre will all be involved. They list, here he... Here, Gene says, here are some fans giving their predictions of who will win that main event. And it's as fast as what I just read. It's just a cut. Fan, fan, fan. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Andre the Giant. Hulk Hogan. Andre the Giant. Andre. Andre. Hogan. Hulk. Andre. And then we get superstars. They get barely any more time. All the heels pick Andre to win. All the baby faces pick Hogan to win. Except the Can-Am Connection, who actually disagrees. Martell picks Hogan. Thomas Inc. picks Andre the Giant. This is the best thing in the show so far. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.